Hello and welcome to this week's episode of The Failure Effect, a show about reclaiming the word failure and turning it into success. This week, we're hanging out with a young lady with an absolutely absorbing story. It's so absorbing that she has even turned it into a book. Um, the book right here is called Thriving in Second Chances, and it is all about everything that she has seen and experienced in her short life, which is the story that we're going to discuss today. And later on, we'll tell you where you can find a copy of this book. But in the interim, welcome to the show, Winnie. How are you? I'm fine. All right. Would Thank you, please you tell for us inviting you? me. <laughs> no worries. You're absolutely welcome. It's a pleasure to have you. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, your full names, um, what you do, and what it is that inspired you to write, just very briefly. Uh, I'm Winnie, yes. Winnie Nyambura, mm -hmm. or you can also call me Winnie Washira. Right. I'm 27 years old, uh, an SEO, finance blog writer, mm -hmm. and also educator, uh, planning to become a financial coach within... And yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow, that's a lot of ambition. And you're 27 years old. Yes. All right. And a lot has happened in your short life. You've seen more than I would say even the average 60 year old would have seen, you know. So let's start right at the beginning with your childhood. What was the one significant event that changed your life, tilted it and took it in another direction? So it began at 2000. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm born 1996. So in 2000, I lost my mom. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that is the major event that has really impacted me up to now. So my mom passed on and my dad was involved. Though so if you want the details, you'll find them in the book. Okay. Yeah, so after my mom passed on, I was taken by my shusho to Molo. We used to live in Limuru, so we went to Molo. And life begins there. Okay, so why why didn't you continue to live with your father? Uh, well, he was involved. Okay, uh, in the loss of my mom, so they had to like take me away from him. Okay, yeah. All right. Yeah. So you went to live with your maternal grandmother. Yeah. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. So next, what happened next? So so I went to live with my grandma. Um, and uh, she took me to her sister. I was schooling with uh, one of her granddaughters. And after some time, after uh, completing uh, nursery school, I went back to my maternal grandma and I began schooling in Bishop Dingi. It's in Molo, around Baraka there. And um, that's where I was schooling from. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have a bit of experiences, a bit of failures there. Mm -hmm. And one of them uh, happens yeah, in 205. Okay. So I had my grandpa around and uh, he used to take good care of me and he loved me. And I felt like I think they took the place of my mom. Uh, they would take good care of me. And I have significant events that I experienced with him. One of them was the way he could wake up early in the morning and give me milk to drink. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah, that mm -hmm. was a good experience. Yeah. It's, it's uh, like, it created good memories, good childhood memories. And uh, also he used to take me to the bus stop. I would be picked by the bus, come back. Yeah. Uh, although I lost him in 2005, Okay. Yeah, he was suffering from diabetes and I was so angry at yeah. him because he left me and I came to reconcile the whole scenario actually this year. Oh, wow. Yeah, early this year. Uh, I used to feel like he betrayed me or he gave up on me. Yeah. Uh, but this year I came to understand as an adult that, at him, uh, that he fought so much to be there. Uh, but it wasn't possible. Mm -hmm. No diseases, illnesses and all that. Yeah, so after that 2005, uh, we continued to live with my grandma and the relatives that were around in the compound. And uh, school for me used to be a norm. Okay. I just used to go to school, but I didn't take keen interest in studying and education and all that. Right. And... Um, 
in class six, my grades were not that good. I never used to perform so well. And I would come maybe in the last 12 students, the last, you know. Right. Yeah, and actually that was not even average when you look at uh, you look at the number of students because I think it was around 40 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, a mathematics teacher, he was the principal by the time, he mm -hmm. was called Mr. Juguna. And uh, he... He made like a rule that if you if you're not going to hit sixty percent, you're going to get uh, some strokes. Okay. And I remember my name used to appear <laughs> like almost all the time. Oh. And so just before I got, uh, we did uh, after we did the last exam in class six. Um, I remember waiting to hear my name when he came to class with the. Uh, with the sheets, with the results sheets. And I thought, no, again today, I'm going to be flogged. So I started rubbing my hands and right. he continued calling the names. He called the names and I was not there. I was like, how am I not here? Because for me, school was routine and I actually didn't even get away. We needed to hustle so much, read so much. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so my name was not there. And for the first time, I was not flogged and was like, how? Can you get 60% and, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, I was moved to my aunt's place. Mm -hmm. That is um, the sister to my mom. She's okay. called Esther mm -hmm. and I call her mom because okay. she was so caring. She always uh, looked out for me and encouraged me. So I went to the new school. Uh, the school is Tigoni Day and... It was a new lifestyle. Those students had another life, another world. Like I couldn't understand. In the previous school, we used to take lunch only and it would be maybe uh, gideri mm -hmm. or um, ugali yeah. and cabbage. Yeah. And the cabbages were, you know, they were they were so big. Yeah. It was a well-performing school, but the standard was not. So I came to this school where students can take ugali and skuma if mm -hmm. you don't take skuma you can go and take cabbages i'm like hey where am i <laughs> and then there's tea uh, uh, at five mm -hmm. uh there's bread if you don't take jam you can take blue band and it was like wow. which world am i in you know i mm -hmm. was used to the life it, mm -hmm. uh like they didn't take much interest into what maybe we ate i'm not sure why but uh mm -hmm. right now they've improved quite okay. a lot yeah That's good I, to know. I, I yeah I checked out the school <laughs> it's they have so much yeah so in Tigoni I kept I maintained the same uh, the same ideology about education and I will just come to school go back come to school go back uh, and then this one time uh, a motivational speaker was invited. I don't know whether to call her a motivational speaker. Uh, she was her, she goes by the name Mrs. Mogambi, and she started telling us that uh, do you know you can accomplish uh, mm -hmm. a lot with your education. And I started realizing, uh huh, uh huh. So I'm just listening, and I got interested. And from that point, I started changing my mindset that I can do something and change my education. And she gave us a strategy of you can maybe schedule a timetable and try and work hard or even consult teachers and all that. And I began working hard. And by the end of that class seven, mm -hmm. I remember I had 299 marks. Wow. And I was like, so I can get from 270 to 50s, you know, and come to, uh, uh, like I can uh, increase my marks. And uh, I remember t telling my friend that, you know what, if I can get to 99, um, I'm never going to get below 300 again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I went back home and my aunt kept uh, encouraging me and she would pray with me. She would yeah. tell me, keep working hard. I know that you're going to make it and I know you're going to get uh, a good KCP grade. Yeah, so um, the husband was also there. He used to support me a lot. Mm -hmm. Actually, the name Winnie Washira, Washira comes from him. Okay. Uh, I would ask for books. Mm -hmm. I would go and tell him, Dad. I, I, I still call him Dad. I would go and tell him, Dad, I want Longman Mads. I want GT, whatever. And, you know, I would name a lot of books. And he was there uh, almost driving away from home. And it would be like, uh -huh, we were hotels. And he would go and bring them. Wow. So I think it was, it's, 
for me, it's a second chance to mm-hmm. have them parent me, to have mm-hmm. my grandma also parent me. Yeah, and so I kept going. Although in 2009, now when I got into class 8, mm-hmm. after getting the 299 marks. So when I got into class 8, uh, there were some family issues okay. and uh, they really affected me. And I remember almost... Uh, after doing my mocks, yeah, after doing my mocks, I got 365. Okay. Yeah, so um, I had to be moved uh-huh. from my uh, my aunt's place mm-hmm. to my great-grandma's place. Why? So there were some issues with the family and they had to relocate. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, they had to make uh, a few arrangements, mm-hmm. go to, uh, to Naivasha, and so, uh, you know, I, I had to complete uh, the KCP yeah. exams. Uh, so there was nothing else they could do. They wouldn't take me with mm-hmm. them to that place. So I was taken to my great grandma's place. Uh, it is in it was in our plans. Okay. Uh, yeah, she passed on, and I'm grateful because she has also impacted my life. Mm-hmm. And so uh, after like a few weeks, again I was moved. Oh. No, this time around, I didn't know why I was moved. Okay. But I was moved back to Limuru okay. to a friend, to my, now my, my biological mom. Okay. And so I pushed through. Uh, the movements were a bit uh, crazy for me. Imagine, yeah, yeah. yeah they, was, they were a bit crazy for me. You know, I'm used to my mom, I'm used to my dad and, they, uh, and their kids. Mm-hmm. So they, they, they even take me as their sister. Mm-hmm. So, and the whole change and... Uh, but I, I persevered through, and I also kept uh, for I was I was a bit uh, I kept I focused on the tuition. I mm-hmm. would go for tuition in the evening, come back, sleep early in the morning, go back to school, prepare for the exams, and I did my exams. I didn't know whether I was going to pass mm-hmm. or I was going to fail, but I really wanted to. Just uh, I had this now idea of ah, I want to at least to get to a good high school. And I got 316 marks. Okay. Yeah, which I was so happy about. Mm -hmm. uh, Because I knew with 300 and above, you're going to get into a good school in Kenya. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, after that, I went back to live with my grandma. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I got an opportunity to study in a Catholic school in uh, Subukia. Mm-hmm. On your way to Nyahururu. Yeah. Uh, so I was admitted. It was in 20, 2010. Yeah, it was in 2010. So I got into high school and I began life there. Mm-hmm. And uh, I went back to the usual me. It's just, I know I'm going to school. And, yes. And this time around, it's boarding school. Yeah. So um, I have no one supervising me, telling me, study. I have no one motivating me, like my auntie would tell me. Mm-hmm. You need to study because she would uh, wake me up at five, I study and all that. Okay. And so this time around, I'm alone. Mm-hmm. And I'm back to, this, to the usual system. So uh, first year, I went through it. I was an average student. Uh, the second year... Uh, I began experiencing uh, intense depression, depression symptoms and anxiety symptoms. So and what what did they look like? What did the symptoms, how did you know that something was off? Uh, I couldn't point out it was depression. Mm-hmm. But then the fact that uh, at times I would just go, there used to be tables behind our class mm-hmm. where we would place the old books. Everyone had a space to arrange their books. And I remember... Uh, sitting below the table and crying mm-hmm. out of no reason. Like, uh, you know, even if someone asked me, why are you crying? Like, yeah. I didn't even know why I'm crying. And then I also started experiencing, I experienced a panic attack okay. once inside the class. Mm-hmm. And uh, our English teacher came came in and I don't know whether he was teaching prefixes or something like that. And it was a bit technical. So he was trying to help us out. And he asked, who needs help? And I made the worst mistake of my life. At right. that time, I lifted my hand and he came to my desk. And the moment he began explaining, I felt out of breath. Yeah, I was like, oh my God, I just wish he could just move 
out of my space and mm-hmm. just go back to the chalkboard mm-hmm. and i couldn't really understand what is happening to me yeah i would feel so tensed when i'm in social places like when it's class time i would be okay when we are going to sleep because i'm alone like everyone is asleep i'm alone and i would feel a bit like i'm struggling you mm-hmm. know to live i'm just struggling and i remember now uh, in form 2 it got so intense that at one point our chemistry teacher was teaching uh, and he was writing a chemical formula and i'm staring uh, on the floor mm-hmm. just staring like that and he calls me winnie and i, uh, I just startled yeah i just startled and i'm like yes and he asks which formula is this and mm. i give the correct name oh wow okay. yeah i give the correct name but then he after that i my tears just started dropping yeah. and he asked me winnie what's wrong who is disturbing you and i'm like you have no idea yeah i'm like no one and, and you know i wouldn't even be able to talk because i'm crying yeah i'm crying but i wasn't even like uh, making any sound mm-hmm. so he told me just go out and get some fresh air and i went out and he referred me to uh, um one a lady teacher who started counseling me mm-hmm. and she would uh she would call me maybe in the laboratory we talk she encourages me she asks me uh personal issues and what what is happening to you and uh at that point when we were talking i started discovering i think i had been affected by comparisons that was one of the things again the loss of my mom didn't mm-hmm. seem like it was an issue because mm-hmm. i was a child so people thought ah she's okay yeah. but then i would keep thinking about it so much like yeah. how, how how did it happen like this why did she have to leave and you know there are times you will face things and you're like i would have run to my mom yeah but you can't do that mm-hmm. and this is significant because you lost her at the age of four. so i mean really that's a very you know it's it's very young it's it's it, it must have been difficult i am so sorry yeah but right now i don't feel that yeah. i don't feel <laughs> i don't feel that uh, okay. a lot of sadness um mm-hmm. but wait i have another question yeah. um apart from this lady teacher who would counsel you mm-hmm. did you have any other sort of support network did you have any best friends close friends you know circle of other students and how did the other students react to your panic attacks did they did were they supportive what what was that like I I think they also didn't understand what is happening. Okay. Uh they only came to realize it in form 3, okay. which you're going to get to. Okay. When it got worse and I did something that Okay. Yeah, that shocked everyone. Right. Yeah, so how was I? The the lady teacher would call you and yeah, counsel you and yeah, speak so to you. Yeah, so she would talk to me and imagine I started like regaining uh, that uh, joy and it's like I'm coming up, coming up again. But then she transferred. Okay. She got a promotion. And I remember the day she told me that she's going, I cried. Yeah. Actually she held me, she hugged me. I really cried. I was like, so you are leaving. Mm-hmm. Who else do I have? I think I I I was looking at everyone and thinking, no one understands what I'm going through. No one knows what is wrong with me except her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cuz we'll discuss it and I would and I would tell her, I don't know who I am. Mm-hmm. I don't know what even what I'm even supposed to do with my life and she will at least talk to me encourage me and also share maybe the person some other person things that would feel a bit of maybe talking uh to other students and she will direct me this is what you do when you get here this is what you do when you get here yeah and so she transferred and mm-hmm. now I transition to form 3 right so I'm in form 3 and I have no one to tell what is happening to me I have no one to listen to all those issues and uh at this point I will get into class a whole 40 minutes mm-hmm. and even if the teacher decides that he's coming for a double lesson I will just be there yeah. but I'm completely absent mm-hmm. uh, I got to a point where I felt so tired with life I wouldn't eat I used to take bread uh in the morning 
I would squeeze it, put it in my in my jumper, in my hoodie, and just go back to class. I I think I started now starving myself. I'll just yeah. feel like I think I'm just tired. I'm just done. And uh, actually, one of the classes I I I remember. Um, it's this time when the teacher was teaching us about balance sheet, something, all those yeah. things, all those math, math things, accounting mm-hmm. things. And I didn't get a thing, a whole class. Yeah. So it was affecting my studies too. And um, throughout that period, uh, I think the symptoms were getting worse. Yeah. And I remember this one time uh, when I felt, I think I'm completely tired and... I don't know whether I was in another kind of um, world or what I can call it, because I was too tired. I took a, a sharpener, the, a sharpener. I removed the blade. Yeah. I took the blade, went into the bathroom, and I said I just want to die. Wow. Yeah. I I, I couldn't point out the where the pressures were coming from that was making me feel like I'm suffocating. Yeah. But I think the the panic attacks now had become like anxiety attacks. Mm-hmm. So I think it got to a point where I would feel now ah, this is too much. Because mm-hmm. yeah, I remember this one instance before I decided to cut myself, uh, where I, I had um a, an anxiety attack. I was in the loo mm-hmm. and it was so bad, the racing heart, the thoughts that I am dying, I'm going nuts. Those are the kind of things that you experience when you're having an anxiety attack. Yeah. And I remember uh, going on my knees, holding the sink and telling God, God, forgive me if, I've, uh, if I've, I, have, uh, I have sinned. If I have offended you, just save me. I don't know what is this, what is happening to me. And it is so intense that you wouldn't convince that person it's not happening. Yeah. But then you can tell that person that she's imagining. Mm-hmm. So after experiencing those uh, those things, I was taken to one of the relatives to try and help me. Mm-hmm. They've, uh, they have some knowledge in psychology, but then it's like they, they looked at me and they thought, this girl is okay. So yeah. they took me back with shopping oh. and pocket money. Actually, I was taken to the supermarket and I was told, pick whatever you want. Okay. Yeah, so they didn't understand yeah. really what is happening. So when I got back, I think that's when now it got so intense that I decided I'm taking this blade and I'm cutting myself and yeah. I just want to go mm-hmm. for good. So I went to the shower mm-hmm. with my blade and I cut myself here. I still have that mark. Okay. So I cut myself, but I didn't know how to cut well. Right. <laughs> so um, I'm seated in the shower. Blood is coming out, but just a little blood. And my head starts aching. It was like a throbbing headache. Like, yeah. And it was so painful. And I'm like, I, I didn't want to die uh, this painful death. So I, I, I decided, let me go to the sisters, ask for some uh, mm-hmm. painkillers. And then I'll just go and sleep. Mm-hmm. So I went, took the painkillers, went to the dorms, and I slept. And... Uh, I forgot to cover my hand. Right. So one of the sisters came in and she saw me and she was like, Winnie, what is wrong? What did you do? And I looked at her and was like, oh my God, they know it. Oh, yeah. And because she was a subordinate, she couldn't keep quiet. Yeah. She decided to go (laughs) and tell the other sisters in leadership. Okay. So uh, this team... It's like things are a bit chaotic because mm-hmm. what has this girl done? Yeah. What was she trying? Yeah. So I go to class and the students are like, Winnie, we've had you've cut yourself. And they look at me and they're like, oh, how could you do this to yourself? I also didn't know how I could do that to myself. Because right now, if you told me such a thing, I would be like, hey, no, yeah. <laughs> that is not an option. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the principal calls my one of my relatives mm-hmm. and she's like... Uh, she, I think she explained everything. And so uh, the relative calls back. That's my uncle. Mm-hmm. So he calls back and he's like, hello. I'm like, hello. And he tells me, so Winnie, uh, what happened? And I go silent. I'm like, I'm not talking. 
what am I supposed to say? And uh, he tells me that if you continue like this, we're going to take you to a day school. You'll be going to school at night because, you know, you have to wake up maybe at three or four ish and then you start walking until you get to uh, to the school. And I'm like, oh my God, how am I going to even to survive that? Mm-hmm. The fact that I didn't like the holidays where, where I will go to farm mm-hmm. and maybe do some bit of plowing. I didn't like it. I, I was like, how am I even going to survive this? Because now yeah. it was going to combine uh, the early morning walks mm-hmm. in the dark plus the mm-hmm. plowing. And I was like, ah, I'm not doing this. And I remember that phone call ended there. Right. And I went out and was like, I just have to push through. But there was this one sister called Sister Stella. She would encourage me. Okay. I, I think she would see it, mm-hmm. but she didn't know what to do yeah. about it. You know, there are those people who will see there's a problem, but they don't know what they can do to help you. So she would encourage me. And at this time, now I I tried to to find a distraction mm-hmm. i began uh engaging in science congress yes. and i also uh got to um i got to vifora there was this um challenge used to call uh, the next, the big, next thing. big thing yeah. yeah the next big thing it was a um, I don't know to call it a challenge or to call it a what uh where you would if you have an you if if you have an idea or ideas you present them and then you write the it's like a proposal you explain what you're going to do uh, what what in, innovation you have what can you do and how can you change uh, maybe the country Africa and all that and I had three ideas mm-hmm. so uh I presented them and i i did this during the holiday uh i can't remember it, whether it was term 2 or term 3 i did it and my uncle was so supportive mm-hmm. uh the one no i have his his surname mm-hmm. so uh he would give me money go to the cyber and i would type 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 because they were asking a lot of questions what is your innovation mm-hmm. um you say maybe a specific gadget mm-hmm. and then he will ask uh they will ask um how is it going to be built what is it going to, what uh, problem is it going to solve mm-hmm. and what do you see in it that will make it uh, an outstanding idea yeah so i did that over the holiday mm-hmm. and completed the whole thing like i think in a week or two weeks what was it that what was your innovation uh i had three okay uh the first one was um an election method okay. that will be an automatic thing that will didn't maybe cost people time uh, going with IDs do using your thumbprints mm-hmm. and all that it was going to be a simple um uh, technology okay uh that, such that you don't need to register do all those things you know like uh they take a lot of money yeah to register at first then come with papers yeah. so it will be paperless okay yeah that is the thing it will be, be paperless and then the second innovation was uh, uh creating cosmetic products mm-hmm. um that are from herbs okay. like the natural herbs like lavender okay. like you don't have to add all this uh, you know you, you you at times you look at those things and you're like even some names I'm not able to read them they yeah. so difficult and I'm thinking yeah. so if this chemical I can't even pronounce the name. How mm-hmm. bad is it to my body? You mm-hmm. know, at times I get tensed about such things. Yeah. Yeah. And then the last one was a magazine. Okay. A teenager magazine where you would talk about, uh, I was thinking about uh, inviting um, professionals mm-hmm. uh, that have excelled in different fields and they can encourage the students. You know, there will be, there will be like such an interview. Okay. And they will maybe uh, encourage the students, inspire them, yeah, and mentor them. Mm-hmm. Yeah so so I was done with presenting all those uh, uh pieces of information and I came back to school. Mm-hmm. So around I, th- I think it was around that term or second term I'm not so sure about the terms mm-hmm. I can't quite remember. So at that time um I continued with school. So I'm getting encouraged by the sister let's keep going and then the distraction is also working on me because mm-hmm. I love business so much right yeah so I kept going and then mid term break came and as I was going back uh, when I went back home I passed through the cyber 
and checking through the names that were shortlisted, I realized uh, I was part of the people who had succeeded. Oh, I wow. wasn't like uh, pushed out. Yeah. But then the date had passed to present the project. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, my. Okay. And I remember borrowing a small phone mm -hmm. and calling the secretary who was coordinating the whole uh, the whole thing and asking her, what can we do? And she told me there's nothing. And I crushed. I cried. Oh, and this is a project that had been holding you together, making sure exactly. your mental wellness was assured. And now here it is. Oh yeah, my. I was pushing through with it. And it went like that. And I was like, it's okay. I just went back home, sad. Mm -hmm. uh, but then because I used to go to my shoshu's shop during the holiday, if I was not going to the garden. And um, just went there, I thought to myself, this uh, cosmetic idea, I can just connect with the Aramis director. Maybe he can buy it. Yeah. So I go to the wholesaler who used to sell my shosho, those uh, Remis and all those yeah. things. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I go and ask him, um, can I get the number for the Aramis company director? And he's like, huh? Why do you want the number? Mm -hmm. uh, do you want to sue him? And I'm like, how would a form three <laughs> sue a director? <laughs> Over Aramis. <laughs> yeah. Like how? Yeah. And mm -hmm. he, he hesitated. And then he told me, ah, um, I told him it's a good thing. And then he's like, it's a good thing. Then he gave me the number. Mm -hmm. I picked the, the phone number and I went. Mm -hmm. I'm still struggling with anxiety. So I picked the phone and I, I'm calling and I'm shaking. I'm like, this is a director. Yes. Oh, how dare you yeah. call a director? And I called him and he told me, uh, I'll, be, I'll be passing um, through Molo. Mm -hmm. as I go to, I don't know whether I was going to Kisumu or somewhere like that. And uh, maybe we can meet at that time. Mm -hmm. So the day comes, I have my papers, I have prepared how lavender can be so good for you, for people's health, for lip balms and all those things. Yeah. And I come, I see a, a lorry, the ones that they carry with the cargo, whatever, those mm -hmm. ones. So I go and he tells me, get in. And I hop into the, onto the bus. And he asks me, young girl, what did you want to tell me? And I look at this guy and I'm like, hey. <laughs> okay. Uh -huh. You know the age. And, yeah. then, and then you're looking at him, you're thinking, uh, this is a man of stature. Yeah. I wouldn't want to joke around and say. And I'm still anxious. So I start presenting the idea. I think the moment I would present those ideas and explain them to people, I think it was to bring, I don't know the yeah. lion in me or what I can say. Uh -huh. the, yeah. Okay. So I explain to him, I explain to him and I'm like, I'm convincing him. Mm -hmm. should, I, we, he should buy this idea. We should work together. Uh, and after looking at everything, he listens, he listens so keenly. But after that, he tells me, you know, for us, uh, we don't deal with such. Mm -hmm. We only do pure... Uh, Milking jelly. Yeah, it's actually yeah. an agricultural business, not a beauty farm. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what I was thinking, but for form <laughs> three, I think I was I yes. was still thinking of how I would be a great businesswoman. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm like, okay. And he tells me, you can talk to maybe companies like Valon and yeah. all that. And I'm like... I'm tired, you yeah. know, like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been trying to push through all these ideas and they're not coming through. Mm -hmm. Like, you know how much time it took me to assemble together this lavender thing, try to research, yeah. why is it good? How, how is it relaxing? How mm -hmm. can it be? You know, and I'm like, hey, uh-uh. Yeah. And then the printing and all that. Mm -hmm. So you see, uh, like, it had taken a lot from me. And I was so passionate and I was, like, so confident that mm -hmm. it would work. So, uh I just told him it's okay. And I moved out of the bus. I went back to my social shop and I closed okay. because it was almost in the, it was in the evening. And I went back home and that's how my ideas oh. <laughs> went down all of them. Oh, no. <laughs> but I believe there's a second chance. Yes. Okay. Just like my book says. Yes. So I don't know when they're going to manifest, when I'm going to actualize them. Mm -hmm. But uh, 
maybe one day one time yeah yeah mm-hmm. i'll do it mm-hmm. so i'm back to school i have nothing to distract me okay yeah so there's still this battles of anxiety attacks once in mm-hmm. a while and uh that's when i transition to form 4 Yes, yeah, but so at this time, did you have an idea like what it is? Had you done any research at all into the symptoms that you're feeling? Oh, I used to go to the library okay. and get psychology books. Okay. So I would read and maybe know something. There's something like a nervous breakdown, there's yeah. something, but I didn't see myself falling into okay. one of those places. So I just uh, overlooked Okay. and I kept persevering and now I get to form four and it hits me. Time is up. Yeah. Yeah, it's time yeah. to focus. Time is up. And, mm-hmm. you know, the fact that I will dream with me plowing and I would wake up to go and study. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It, it was like an awakening, like when you're in Form 4. If mm-hmm. you don't get a good grade, you're mm-hmm. not going to the university. And you really wanted that. I really wanted to go to the university. Mm-hmm. Um, so I... I at, at the first time I was not that serious but I was trying to like uh catch up yeah for the few subjects that I was uh doing um uh, I was not doing good so first first term second term another thing I used to love reading motivational books okay uh think big you told me reading think big there was another mm-hmm. book but i can't remember its name it was a young man who had written from mm-hmm. kenya and there was also another one i can't really remember but i remember a story of a guy who got an 83 from being a, i think a c student or something like that mm-hmm. so i love them but they love i love motivational speakers mm-hmm. i know people trash them a lot online <laughs> the only issue i have is when you come to motivate me but you don't have a strategy okay Okay. Yeah, if okay. you have a strategy, I would listen. So I loved reading them. So first term, second term, I do the mocks and I have like I think it was a C minus or a C. Oh, it was Ooh. there. It was ranging there. Yeah. And I'm thinking 2013. Yeah. The pass mark wouldn't mm-hmm. uh, that wouldn't even work for for me like it was so bad. Yeah. So uh I go back home although the mocks are a bit i i find them a bit the harder uh, hard. than the main exam yeah. yeah so i go back home and um i'm like so what should i do i'm tensed i need to go to the university and there was a cousin ahead of me my eldest cousin uh for her she had gotten a i think it was a 74 or something a b plus a very okay. strong b plus yeah so she would tell me now i've paid it Mm-hmm. Now it's your turn. So oh. she would challenge me. Yeah. So I go back home and I get back I I get a tuition. Uh there used to be two guys. One guy used to teach us chemistry in the morning. The other one used to be from Jaiquat. This guy we, we never used to pay him, but the first one used to pay him 20 shillings. Mm-hmm. So I would go to that tuition. At times I didn't even have the money. Because yeah. I wouldn't even coordinate. Like, I wouldn't. How am I telling my social? Oh, tuition. Why were you not studying earlier and all that? And I remember going at times without money. Uh-huh. And then the guy was like, uh, whoever does not have money should stay outside. But then there was this, there was something happening. Me and my friend, we used to answer questions a lot. Uh-huh. Even if we didn't know, we would pick our hands up and raise our hands up and we would tell him, ah, uh, This is the answer and he will tell them no it is this one uh like here this is where you're wrong but mm-hmm. this part you okay and all that and so when i'm outside and it's only my friend who is inside and the rest of the students it was a boring class yeah. so he would find it so boring <laughs> to the point that he would be like ah just come back <laughs> after the break <laughs> and i will okay. take advantage because i if i don't have the money i just get in mm-hmm. So I went through that time. I used to have a very bad uh, um attitude yeah. towards chemistry. When mm-hmm. I was getting into form 1 I was okay, but then the you know the the other students, the the ones that are in form 2, form 3, form 4, mm-hmm. they would be like, "Hey, chemistry is hard." Yeah. I had even stopped taking notes until form 4. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I remember the teacher taking my notes and he's like, "You've never written notes." At times I would pay. Mm-hmm. I I have an aunt who would give me like a hundred shillings. 
but then i would be like um, after i pay i'm like i would plan that money because i would um uh, like budget that money because we used to eat some this had the 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 cold gumus gumus yes. used to be so sweet so we would contribute and get a packet and come and mm-hmm. um feast on them during break time and so that we could stay until evening so you, it's like we are just trying to yeah yeah catch up and um that tuition helped me a lot mm, and then also one of my friends mm-hmm. she is my mentor and um this time she took my chemistry paper mm-hmm. and I, i was having like 40 something or 50 something marks i can't quite remember but then she, we went through the questions that i had failed and i would give uh, the right answer mm-hmm. so she would be like how and i realized it's my attitude so that one also helped me and something else that helped me catch up uh, within that short period of second term and that up uh was i would go for discussions with form 3s form 2s i didn't care like mm-hmm. i knew these guys had content fresh in their minds so that one also helped me and i remember praying to god and telling him no i've not given my best my best like i've been trying i mm-hmm. would because at times i would wake up early in the morning like 3 a.m. and try to read and then my sister would be like who is that because she will hear the locks the <laughs> the living room locks and I'll be, be like it's me and she'll go like it's early go back to sleep and i'm thinking me i come back to 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 plow over here oh no <laughs> i need to get good marks yeah so i i tried my best and i told god um I know I've not really like given you know you, you know you know your potential mm-hmm. uh, like uh, even if you even if at, even even at work you know when you're doing your work you know this is my A yeah yeah and you know uh, this one this is my B so mm-hmm. I knew I was I wasn't that serious so I told God God if you give me a minimum please give me a B plus that yeah. will get me to the university uh if you give me a maximum give me an A minus actually the first point i don't want the <laughs> the strong yeah. points no and i went uh, before i went back to school now for the exam for that term uh something happened someone i expected to encourage me told me that i was going to fail because this is just last minute preparation oh dear and uh, the anxiety is not over the depression mm-hmm. is not over so it crashed me mm-hmm. and i'm like i'm going to fail that is so true oh no no you, you see it's connecting with the fact that i wasn't giving my full potential yeah so it's like i'm going to fail okay and i remember running uh, on a certain road uh at home again borrowed a phone as usual mm-hmm. i found a guy who was uh, who knew me So I borrowed the phone. I called my mom, my mom and Tiesta, and I told her, "Mom, I'm going to fail. Oh. I'm not going to make it. I just want to go, to go back to form 3." Okay. Yes, I want to rewind. And she was like, "No, you're not going to you're not going back to form 3. You're not wasting your time." Mhm. You go to that school, you do that exam and be confident you're going to pass. and the open uh, opening day comes and i go back to school and i'm completely uh, i don't know i think i was so i had lost hope on yeah. my education and i was feeling it's true i need to go back mm-hmm. I, it's important for parents to know that their words impact yes kids relatives also to know that their words impact mm-hmm. kids and I went to my class teacher and told him, "You know what, Mr. Njuguna, I want to go back to form 3." Yeah. And he told me, "What are you telling me, Winnie? I want to go back to form 3." And he told me, "You're not going back to form 3. You're going to do the exam." Mhm. And he encouraged me. Actually, most of the times you would see me uh before the, uh, on that during that time you will see me rushing on the corridors <laughs> to the staff room back i was only having one goal chemistry right i wanted that me <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and 
for English, the languages and all that, I didn't quite like yeah. them. But yeah. I, I wasn't performing so bad. And so I I would try and salvage the situation. Mm -hmm. So he kept on encouraging me. And I kept on with the discussions from I, I also I would also do the uh, do hold the discussions with the form fours, and the exam came. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so some of them I came out happy. Some of them was like, "Hey, that one." I, actually, some of them I would cry. I would come out of the laboratory crying, and the teacher would be like, "Winnie, what is wrong?" And I'm like, hey, "Yeah, I don't see a breakthrough there." And as life would have it, after Form 4, you go get busy with other things. Yeah. Actually, yeah. I went to, to uh, manage my uncles and aunts' preschool. Mm -hmm. So I was so busy. Mm -hmm. And the day for the results came. And I remember I was so anxious. I went to the toilet several times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> because I'm tense. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is going to happen. And... I was almost to a point of not being operational because mm -hmm. I was so afraid. Yeah. I don't know where the fear was coming from. I don't think plowing is that bad again to yeah. make me yeah. uh, be that scared. But then um, I had to face the, the results because I was, I was the one who did the exam. Mm -hmm. So I couldn't check them myself. Uh, because I didn't know how I would like take that failure. Yeah. So I told my eldest cousin, Ah, Eliza, oh, the exams, they are here. I don't know what to do. Uh -huh. So she's in the university. Actually, we study in the same university, University of Nairobi. Uh oh, so I guess you've already told us exactly how your exam results came out, but you know, they mentioned oh, your end. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, uh -huh, carry on. Yeah, so. Uh, so she checks them and she sees a, six, a, B, a B plus of 69 points. And she uh -huh. tells me, yeah, you've already passed. You're coming to the university. Uh -huh. And I'm like, ooh. <laughs> a sound of, of relief. Like, so I'm going to the university. I won't plow. I won't. And I, I think I also used to see like my education is the solution to what I'm feeling. Yeah. But I didn't know it's some um, um, mental like issues. Mm -hmm. So I was admitted in 2014, September, Apakabete. Mm, the struggles are still there. Yeah. But then I think with the new adrenaline, ah, I'm a university, you know, mm -hmm. like student. Um, I, it's like I, I placed them like behind me. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the university and our alumni mm -hmm. in high school used to tell us. Yeah. That you don't need to study when you get to the university. After you work hard in high school, in the university, you don't need to, st to study. And I think it's a propaganda. Hey, it, I think I it's mean, so bad. This, that is Because it, it impacted lie. me. Yeah. <laughs> it affected me, by the way, in a negative way. So I start schooling in Apakabete. What um, were you studying? I'm doing agribusiness management. Okay. You know, I loved business so much. Okay, but then you see it's also agriculture, so you've almost taken yourself back to the plowing that you're running away from. But I didn't know. Actually, <laughs> one of the people told me, agribusiness is more of business yeah. than agriculture. Mm -hmm. So I'm there and uh, um, there's this scenario that happened almost like three times. And the lecturer would ask a question, the students would answer in a choral verse, and I would be like, I'm the only one who doesn't know. I? So the the third time he asks, I think he asked, uh, which method of feeding chicks is this? And everyone answered, I uh -huh. was the only one. Right. Yeah. Okay. And it dawned on me, you're in the wrong career. Okay. And I was like, you know what? I'm doing an, in, uh, an in, is it an intrafaculty? Yeah. I'm changing the course. And I'm not even telling my shosho, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the one who took me to, to school. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> And I remember writing those letters, going to the main campus, coming back. I, they did a lot of traveling for me too, mm -hmm. uh, to change my course. Um, I had a mentor at the time. 
and he advised me because I used to love psychology. Yeah. But then a relative discouraged me from transferring to psychology. And I, the mentor told me, you know, if you do an education course, you're going to do uh, some psychology uh, okay. units and then you can ma- you can master yeah uh, the psych- you can ma- you get a masters in psychology so i transferred to kikuyu campus mm-hmm. and took business and maths okay maths yeah okay uh-huh yeah so uh, um by the time i'm going mm-hmm. i'm transferring to kikuyu it's like two weeks to the exams. And we have, I think there was calculus one and basic maths. Yeah. And I didn't even have the notes. Oh my. Yeah. So it's time to make new friends. Yeah. And yeah. get some notes. Yeah. And I got a few notes. I, I did, I, I tried to study wherever I could. Mm-hmm. And I was like, I'm just doing them. Mm-hmm. And I did the exams. Thank God I didn't get a supplementary. I don't know how. But okay. I got some Ds. Okay. Yeah, and the business uh, passion in me awakened. It mm-hmm. decided to just, you know. Blossom. <laughs> yeah. And this is the beginning of all failures, entrepreneurship and business. That's where sure. it starts. <laughs> okay. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I, I had begun with a different business. I think it was, I would uh, get some uh, few like, uh, blazers, mm-hmm. and I will sell to students. Then my mentor asked me, hey, you're doing business? And I'm like, yeah, I want to do business. I want to own a bit by the time I'm in the year or yeah. the second year. And he tells me, I'm going to help you out. And I, he told, he gave me an idea of selling candies. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it was the most famous one at the time, 2015, was Big Daddy. Okay. Yeah, so I would get them in OTC mm-hmm. and sell them. Mm-hmm. In shops, and then when I'm in class, I would place it um, at the door. I would sit at the door, mm-hmm. place it there. So when you're coming in, you're going to see I have big daddies, and you're going to buy them. Mm-hmm. So you get in, and then I would give on. Uh, the only people I would give on credit is those that I knew. Yeah, yeah. So I, I kept doing that business, and I was so ambitious that at one point I decided that I was going to sell two cartons of big daddy. Wow. Yeah, and they used to be 16 packets. Mm-hmm. So I would carry them on my back. I used to have, I had a, a pink suitcase mm-hmm. and there's another bag that my dad had bought for me. Yeah. A very nice bag. So I would place some there and some on my on my backpack. And I remember going through those towns. Each town had a day. If it's Keno, it's today. If it's Udiru, like that. Okay. Yeah, and I forgot to study. Oh my goodness. <laughs> If I was studying, it was just a bit. Yeah. Like it was not a priority. Because I would go to uh, to OTC at 6 or 6.30, pick the candies, come sell them. Uh, and I would back, uh, come back uh, to the house at okay. 5. So what, what, how, what was your profit margin like? Were you bowling? Were you just breaking even? At times I was bowling. Okay. Yeah, because wow. I From didn't speaks. have competition at the time. I think okay. it was just like a, a, a new candy at the yeah. time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, and I would save up the money and my mentor would be like, you know what? You're uh-huh. going to own that bits. You're going to become a big, uh, a very successful businesswoman. I was like, yeah, that is what I want. Okay. <laughs> I think the thrill in doing such a thing and thriving in the business was making me forget that I have anxiety or anything. Mm-hmm. Also, I would, although I would, I would feel a bit uneasy in social places, but I would go in confidence and encourage myself and tell myself, you know what, I'm I'm going to you make can it. still, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So something happened to you at around this time while you were in campus. Yeah. Someone new entered your life. Uh, not not yet. Okay. Yeah, they came in in the dia. Okay. Uh-huh. Oh, yo, yeah, the first one. The first one wasn't like a relationship thing mm-hmm. that we had agreed on mm-hmm. but then it was like a lead on yeah and i was starting to find my solace in this person mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um considering the losses i had i had experienced before i think i saw them as someone who can work with me and be there for me mm-hmm. and so this person left mm-hmm. i think it was even like a ghosting <laughs> thing. oh 
Okay, so you. And it was so hot. Yeah. And so yeah, that one crushed me. Mm-hmm. And the business also had issues. Yeah. Because competitors came in. Okay. So I'm selling the candies at 280 a packet. Mm-hmm. But then these guys are coming with lorries. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And they're selling at 250. Yeah. So it was so bad. I couldn't keep up with the competition and the standard that I had kept because mm-hmm. um my mentor at the time used to use me as an example. Mm-hmm. Look at her, she has been in first year and she was doing this well. Now now I transitioned to second year. He's like what's up? Mm-hmm. What's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. You've been the example and I hate pressure. Yeah. And this time he was pressuring me. And I remember withdrawing from the group mm-hmm. and deciding that I was not going to do the business. Mm-hmm. And if I was going to do it, I was just going to re- to sell the remaining stock mm-hmm. as one as a uh, uh, like one piece mm-hmm. instead of selling in packets because it was so tiresome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, in the first days I was feeling my joints I was not okay. It was so they would ache and I'd be like hey but then after a week or two I got used to it and so I with you I decided mm-hmm. to come back to the Christ, to, to join the Christian union by the time I hadn't because that group used to go for missions yeah. and all that I yeah. didn't have a balance yeah <laughs> like yeah. I was just out there either business missions and um I wouldn't advise anyone to do that. Okay. It's not good. It's bad for mm-hmm. your education. And so with the heartbreak and everything, uh depression sets in again and anxiety, mm-hmm. although it was not that bad. Okay. I just withdrew from people. And so I got back to school and I got these two roommates. Mm-hmm. Uh one of them is my friend. She's okay. called Jane and we shared a room. And I remember some of the anxiety systems symptoms I would experience was I would wake up in the morning knowing that I have a class at eight, prepare, but then I'll just get a stomach ache and a headache from nowhere. Oh no. Yeah, I don't know how it works. Yeah. I don't know whether it has happened to other people who have experienced anxiety issues. Yeah, and uh second year is over, the day is here, first semester. And I feel ter- terribly. Okay. Yeah, I got I, I got some I got a retake. Yeah, there were two, and it was so bad. And I was like, what am I doing? Mm-hmm. And I remember going for uh, going for the holiday, and my shoshu telling me, uh, "Do you know there's a rel- relative who got a second class lower?" And for that uh, award, you cannot transition. You cannot transition direct into to do your masters. Yeah. Hey, and I was like, she knows. Although she didn't like say it like second lower, but she knows mm-hmm. that is the award. And I was like, oh my god. Yeah. She yeah. She pays the school fees on time, but I wasn't doing business because I didn't have um, a school fee. At times students will be there oh how am i going to do my exams without mm. uh, my school fee has not been paid but my shosho always paid my school fee on time mm-hmm. but then she did that uh from throughout when we were with her cuz i only stayed with my uncle and auntie for two years mm-hmm. she would pay my school fees i have never been sent home yeah yeah go back for school fees or anything and i'm so grateful for her okay so this time i'm like she has paid school fees She has given me the basic needs that I that 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 like I can't stay without. What is wrong with me? Mm-hmm. I go back to school. I don't know whether it's a coincidence, but I don't take it as a coincidence. I think it was God's plan, because uh, on a, on one of the Sundays, um, a minister comes and the minister about our education uh, we should practice faithfulness in our education that god has entrusted us with it for a reason and i'm there and he says but god can give you a second chance if you've not been faithful okay and i'm like this is me mm-hmm. this is me i was okay. going to come out of here with a lower right <laughs> with, a lower, with, an, with at um, least an upper 
yeah i'm not saying a lawyer is bad yeah but then you see your potential your parents yes and also you, I, i really wanted to do a masters at the time mm-hmm. for uh, i wanted to do a psychology masters so um i go back to my room i meditate ponder upon those words and i'm like winnie you need to do something yeah so also at this time comes a guy into my life mm mm-hmm. and this one i truly loved yeah <laughs> i had a strong connection and i i thought that relationship would be long term and things were okay but then when we went for the uh for the teaching practice i went to nakuru my forces and for him he was left behind and things didn't work out by the time we were still pushing through we were still pr- pushing through and uh throughout that year i kept my promise to god that i was going to take this second chance mm-hmm. and i gave my best and after form 3 uh, uh sorry after that year uh we get to fourth year and i keep pushing because i don't want to uh to let my grandma down i was like oh, she has done so much she clothed me throughout she fed me uh-huh. if it's christmas she would come with new dresses for me why mm-hmm. would i want to let her down and i did my best so during this time if you if you didn't find me in the library you would only find me uh in my hostel or in the cu services yeah. and all that and i pushed through until now the last semester for the year i remember going through an anxiety attack too during an exam it was a tft i think it is history of education yeah. it, it was a unit yeah. and i remember having an anxiety attack picking my paper dropping it mm-hmm. on the lecturer's table and going to the field because i don't know what i'm feeling i don't mm-hmm. know what is this mm-hmm. i just feel I, I want to die. It's like my I'm almost going crazy and the you know the racing heart it, mm-hmm. it's so bad. Mm-hmm. I I wouldn't wish that yeah for anyone. Yeah, so uh so during this period the last semester mm-hmm. I'm almost doing my last exams and I go to I go to meet uh my relative. Mm-hmm. So we go talk about uh my education and settling after school so we agree that i'm going to uh work for one year and the money that i'll have saved up he's going to add the rest so that i can do my masters right yeah so and he gave me a, a, a phone i didn't have a good phone at the time he gave me a good phone mm-hmm. and i came back to school i'm like so excited i have a plan and hell breaks loose when the guy tells me yeah yeah the relationship is over. over uh-huh okay he he told me in a nice way yeah and we even discussed it but i didn't know it broke me that bad yeah cuz i cried and at the time i was also knitting some mats and mm-hmm. i remember knitting some mats in the evening and crying yeah yeah I think I'll go study come back and cry. Mm-hmm. And I was like I just have to push through. Mm-hmm. So I did my exams, completed them. I did my retakes and there was one missing unit too. I forgot about that one. It was in it was a form 2 unit, a psychology unit. Mm-hmm. But they used to get all my psychology units A A A A. I I really loved psychology. Yeah. So um that one i had done it but then they didn't add the marks okay so the lecturer tells me go check in the psychology department tell the guy at the reception to check the paper for you mm-hmm. so that you can you can uh, uh you can the marks can be added mm-hmm. and i went there and the guy refused to cooperate i remember crying <laughs> oh i'm so sorry <laughs> and he was like you where were you like and i'm like it's just been one year you can mm-hmm. check there you can check the paper but he, mm-hmm. he didn't check in the end by the way i had to repeat the exam mm-hmm. um 
this time actually then god i i met a, a female lecturer mm-hmm. and she was so nice and she even encouraged me when the time that i was crying so i'm done with campus heartbroken i don't have work but i have a house okay well that's good wait yeah. at what point because i know you have a four year old son yeah at what point did you have your child yeah so um i've noted It's okay, the, yeah, you, um, you still yeah. don't have a child, but yeah. but it's because I'd like us to get to, because you know, obviously your son has, you know, he's he's gotten yeah. you through a lot. Yeah, sure. So when did you have him? So I had him. So uh, I I completed my education in 2018 August. Mm-hmm. So I got my son uh, in 2019 mm-hmm. September. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2019 September. Mm-hmm. That's when I got my son, and. Uh everything was okay until he was around 8 9 months. I used to struggle with still those uh anxiety symptoms and depression. Yeah. But then it got severe when he was 8 9 months. Mm-hmm. So that's when they were so bad. At times I would I wouldn't be able to coordinate normal chores. I would feel they're so overwhelming. Yeah. They are taking so much energy. They are racing thoughts. I think it became worse and I contacted one friend uh who had studied psychology and she gave me an assessment. Right. And then she told me, "Do you know what? You've got depression and anxiety. You have severe severe okay. depression and anxiety disorder." And I'm like, "Wait a minute. Mhm. This is what I've been suffering from." Yeah, all And I didn't years. even know. Mhm. And so uh she took me to one of the centers where I went it is in Lower Kabete they give me the drugs I started taking them uh but after I think a few weeks or uh, like a month we fell out with the, with my son's dad so I started life from scratch okay yeah and my mentor took me mm-hmm. uh, we began life from there Mm-hmm. I used I I I was passionate about being an author. Mm-hmm. But I hadn't got the chance okay to like actualize the whole um like dream and everything. And she trained me at the writing. I began working with her. She would refer me to other uh, other clients. Mm-hmm. That's when I began to and she worked with me. Okay. Actually I didn't go back to the hospital. Mm-hmm. I didn't even go for counseling, but she would be there for me. She would support me because anytime I would be down, you know, I would talk to her and she also began working with me right to get back uh you okay. know like it's like my spiritual life was back. Yeah. My mental health is back. You yeah. know my emotional ba- my my emotional life everything is Yeah. Yeah, so we started she started working with me and um That's how I started life from scratch again with my son. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and so this is where you are now. What is it like? Mm-hmm. Um because you know I I'm, I'm a parent as well and I understand the sort of nervousness and the panic that you feel when you look at your child and you consider I could have been thus far but here we are will I be able to sustain a particular standard of life for my child. Do you ever have those thoughts and how do you deal with them if you do? Yeah, um I think about it. Mm-hmm. I think about the kind of life yeah. that I had maybe envisioned. Mm-hmm. Um but then mm-hmm. I'm grateful for where I am right yes. now. The fact that I'm I'm a healthy mom. Yes. Mentally able to, you know, to take everything that kids come with, you know, what yes. they come with. Yes, yes. <laughs> they can be quite uh, demanding at times. Yeah. And I'm able even to play with him, to connect with him and bond with him. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, those thoughts do come. Yeah. And that's why we are working hard yes. towards those goals. Yes. So that they can go to the schools that we want them to. Uh, mm-hmm. we want them we wanted them to go and experience um maybe the different things that we also wanted them to yes. experience yeah yeah so, so yeah i mean i'm just okay first of all uh-huh. i'm really impressed that you've managed to you know keep it together um no matter everything that you've gone through yeah. and i'm happy you're in such a good phase you know of your life um i am really happy for you and your book once again um 
ladies and gentlemen, you can find this book where you find the details of everything that Winnie has told us about her life. And you can find it at Global Scroll, Scroll Publishers Limited. So we'll put the details there on the screen for you. You may reach out to them and find out where you can collect your copy of this book. Now then, Winnie, thank you so much for your time. <laughs> That was a huge story, and I think it is important for every person who has a child in high school, right, and is about to sit an exam, you know, to get them prepared, you know, what the child might be going through yeah. and to understand how to support them. Um, and I just want to say thank you for your time and thank you for sharing your fantastic story with us. You're welcome. Okay. And we will see you all next week for another one just like this one. <laughs>